Welcome back. This wall wart here is dead as a dodo. It was made by PowerTech and it belonged to my uh, <laughs> Zalman external three and a half inch HDD cases. Uh, I have some videos about them uh, or they featured in some videos <laughs> of mine lately. Cards here, links in the description. Uh, let's have a closer look at that label here. So it's 100 to 240 volts AC, 50 to 60 hertz, 1.5 amps. <clears throat> okay, that's probably the peak when you're switching it on, uh, usual polarity. Uh, at the output connector, so uh, the outside is ground, inside is positive. Output 12 volts, 1500 milliamps. Uh, for ITE used only, uh, yeah, whatever, used only, whatever that means. It has all the features and labels and security it needs. I cannot throw it away. So we have to <clears throat> tear it apart. And of course, it's made in China. The thing is, I had two of them because I bought at the same time two of these Zalman external HDD cases. And if memory serves right, the second one is already dead or died a while ago. So I'd say average lifetime of the things, uh, yeah, for two samples, a sample set uh, is too small. Um, yeah, four to five years when they are constantly plugged in and at least some power is drawn. But enough talk. Let's see if we can crack this open. So far it's resisting. Ah, okay, finally. Um, yeah, almost non-destructive. <laughs> And we can get that thing here out and have a closer look. So we start the other way around from the low voltage side, just because I already had a look at it. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, the transformer secondaries, uh, which come do not come out as pins on the PCB, but here as wires. We have a two diodes in parallel rectifying them and then a bigger electrolytic which is uh, can you see that uh, yeah bulging and then we have another uh, LC filter afterwards so really uh, excessive well for wall ward excessive output filtering so a uh, little inductance here and another electrolytic which is can you see that yeah also bulging and by the way this is 220 microfarads the second one 16 volts and the first one is well temperature range uh, 105 degrees c so not that bad and uh, can't see the manufacturer, but this is 1000 microfarads, 16 volts. It seems to be, uh, oh, yeah, KYS, whatever. 
uh, that one has the same color, so I guess it's also uh, KYS. And then of course we have the optocoupler here uh, from the low voltage back to the high voltage side. And we have a proper EMF <laughs> uh, suppression capacitor here across uh, the isolation between low and high voltage side. Hmm. On the high voltage side we have our AC input here and some kind of fuse. A little moth, uh, really surprising. Uh, X or Y filter capacitor, a common mode choke, wow. And then down here a full bridge rectifier. <clears throat> yeah, made out of four single diodes. And this is filtered by this capacitor which is 400 volts, I guess, 33 microfarads, also for 105 degrees Celsius. Uh, also something with Y, Valicon. Yeah, yeah so <clears throat> cheapy stuff in here. Another capacitor. This is probably uh, just a freewheeling diode. Uh, yeah, for the step down converter here, or maybe this is a freewheeling diode. Uh, here's another capacitor, which is not bulging. This one is <laughs> bulging too. And oh, I lost something at the back. That was a surprise. I wanted to keep that for you. And uh, yeah, below that heatsink, uh, probably a MOSFET or something for switching. Something else here. Oh uh, yeah, this little capacitor here. Can I see something? A little bit out of focus. Uh, also for 105 volts. That's not too shabby, but can I see the value somewhere? I would have expected, oh, uh, 22 microfarads and 35 volts. Well, that's not too much, is it? Hmm. On the back, low voltage side again, <laughs> we have an isolation shield here, which is, yeah, has a little snap in pin that is a uh, holding it to the PCB and that's where basically the mains AC cable was over the PCB. So nice attention to detail. This thing is not as bad. Uh, wide isolation area here, isolation gap between the low voltage and high voltage side and even a really big isolation slot here below the optocoupler. Uh, though no isolation slot here um, below the uh, yeah, EMF coupling capacitor whatever, but these pins are mm, quite far apart, so no problem. So on the low voltage side we have here some SMD resistors and capacitors and a little, I guess, a uh, transistor. And this is all to drive the optocoupler. Yeah, I don't know if the optocoupler is on when the voltage goes up here above 12 volt or if it goes up, uh, down, off, off, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, nothing else active here, just a few SMD resistors. So this is really very simple and if I have a look here at these pins these are all bound together these are the yeah uh, primary and auxiliary winding of the transformer these pins and these pins belong to the package yeah that's hidden under this heatsink. And yeah, the heatsink itself seems to be glued on or soldered on. 
No, that's that's really just glued on. I could rip it off, but uh, yeah, it would just. Sorry, I was out of frame. It would just uh, reveal one of these. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, generic Chinese uh, AC power supply, switched AC power supply. Uh, chips that all do the same and uh, you cannot get any data sheets for them. So yeah, all in all, I think, I think if we replaced all the capacitors here, I mean, it's only one, uh, the electrolytics, uh, it's one, two, three, four, that thing should be up and running again. Hmm. Yeah, maybe a little project if I run out of 12 volt wall warts, uh, which I don't think I will anytime soon. And that's already it for today. I guess if they have put better capacitors in here, uh, better electrolytics, this thing would still be working. Uh, interestingly, I also took, I already cut it and linked the videos, I took that some on uh, external HDD case apart and had a close look at the electrolytics in there. And that case was, uh, yeah, about uh, duty cycle 50%. <laughs> meaning I had it on for two months or for a few months and then it was off for a few months and that over a span of almost 10 years and the electrolytics in there were still perfect. So I don't know if they were perfect, but at least they weren't bulging. Well, as I said, I can always repair that or try to repair it if the need arises. That's it for today again. Till next time, bye.